The question I've been asked is, you know, how can we be faithful witnesses for Christ? And the first thing I want to say is we need to be reminded that's why we're here. Um, you know, we have a lot of things we do in our lives, lots of reasons for living, lots of purposes as followers of Christ. But I often remind people that the central message, the central mission Jesus gave before he left this planet was, he said, you know, I'm about ready to leave. And I mean, literally, he was about ready to ascend back into the clouds, back into heaven. But he said, before I go, you know, here's the marching orders. Here's the reason I'm leaving you here. And he said, I want you, all of you, and not just the disciples who were there, but he was, you know, when he looked in their eyes, he was looking through them into our eyes. And he said, I want you to go into all the world, and I want you to share the good news. I want you to tell them about me, about Jesus, and about all that I've taught you. And I want you to make disciples. In other words, I want you to help them to become your followers just like you are. And, you know, teach them, baptize them, grow them up in the faith, and then send them to do the same thing. So I think it helps, you know, when we think about being witnesses, to realize this isn't something we're doing just because, you know, some teacher or some youth leader or your parents or, you know, even this curricula say that it's important. Uh, all of those are fine. All of those are good. But ultimately, we want to be faithful witnesses for Jesus because Jesus told us that's what we're here to do. That's your main purpose. And so I think that's a good way to start. But secondly, I want to remind you of a verse. It's probably been quoted a fair amount, but I think it's good to go back to. There's really four elements in this verse from Peter in 1 Peter 3.15. And the first element, he says, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. In other words, start by saying, I've got to be right with Christ. I, I can't be a good witness unless I'm reflecting something I already have, something I already know, something I'm already experiencing, and that is a living relationship with the living Savior. So it starts with that, you know, get right with Christ, walk with him, so that what you do when you share with other people is an overflow of what's authentic and real in your life. The second part of the verse says, always be prepared to give an answer. So the work you're doing in this study, you know, in this curriculum, is vital. It, it says, be prepared. Well, you're doing that. Congratulations. But don't view it as just this one class, this one course you're doing. This is a lifelong process. I tell you, I've been doing this for many years, and I'm constantly reading books and studying the scriptures and watching you know, YouTube videos from good ministries like Summit and others. And I'm learning all the time. We're always preparing because there's always new questions. There's always new issues. So set apart Christ as Lord, be prepared. Number three, uh, be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks for, for the reason, for the hope you have. And so this means you don't just want to be ready. You want to really take a, a risk and open your mouth and, and give an answer, you know, blurt it out. Just say, you know, I don't know if you've ever looked at this, but I believe the Bible's true. Or, you know, I met Christ personally, and it changed my life. And here's what, you know, what I believe, and here's how it makes sense. And here are the reasons for what I believe. Be ready to talk about that. And you'll never do it perfectly, but do it anyway, because God can use our imperfect effort in his perfect ways. But then finally, there's a fourth element here, and in some translations, this is actually verse 16. Uh, I'm using the NIV. It's the last part of verse 15 here. But it says, do this with gentleness and respect. So if we want to be faithful witnesses, we need to not just blurt it out, not just be right, not just have good arguments. We need to be motivated by love, and we need to say what we say in a spirit of gentleness and respect so that the person listening to us says, you know, not only does he or she make a lot of sense, um, they, I like them. You know, they're saying it in a way that tells me they care about me. And they're trying to bring what they're saying in a way that's helpful and in a way that is designed to make my life better as I learn about God and follow his will in my life. Uh, so because of their gentle spirit, because of their um, respectful way they talk to me, I want to be like them. And so if we do all of that, 
motivated by the mission Jesus gave us. We will be regular and faithful witnesses for Christ, and he's going to use you in ways you just cannot imagine.